Pal raises rates. What does that mean for you? Let's talk about it. Hello, everybody. Joe Warby coming at you. And in the June meeting of the Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell raised interest rates by 0.75% or 75 basis points. You know, we thought maybe he was going to do a 50 basis point raise or a half a percent raise. That was what was expected. But heading into the meeting, stock market returns were down. The NASDAQ was down 30%. The S&P 500 was down 25, 26%. Things were not looking good for the overall economy. Our first quarter of the year GDP was down over the last quarter of 2021. And so Fed Chairman Jerome Powell decided he needed to do something to keep inflation from rising from 8.5 to 8.6%, the most recent increase we had seen inside of inflation. And so what did he do? He raised rates by 0.75%, one of the most aggressive rate increases we've seen and one week later, the stock market is basically flat. As you can see, the day after the rate increase, NASDAQ was down 4%, the S&P was down 3%, the Dow was down 2.5%. But you fast forward to today, and all three indices are basically flat. That means that the market expected the rate increase, they liked the rate increase, they felt like Powell was actually doing something positive. But let's see what this means for the overall economy. Number one, Unemployment will probably rise. Right now we're at about 3.6% and Jerome Powell feels that we can handle between 4 to 4.5% 4 unemployment and because the cost to borrow money is going up, that means that the cost for businesses to operate is going to increase. That means that more than likely they will have to lay off a few people and we will see unemployment rise from about 36 to maybe 4 or 4.1%. This is normal, this is good, this is the Fed's job. I don't see this being an overall negative, but we will see unemployment begin to rise. Number two, bonds have just been hammered because of this. As interest rates go up, existing bonds that have a lower yield are not in demand, so we see bonds fall in value. And as you can see, the Bloomberg US Bond Aggregate Index average has cratered. It's down over 18% from its high last year. That means that bonds are down 18%. The S&P 500 is down over 20%. The NASDAQ, your tech stocks are down close to 30%. We have had a very terrible year in the markets, but maybe things are going to start to come back. And the area of finance that's being affected the most is mortgages. The 30-year rate just surpassed 6%. And we can see a mere year and a half ago, it had bottomed at 2.65%. A year and a half ago, if you would have borrowed money at 2.65%, it would have cost you about $1,600 a month, principal and interest. Today, that same mortgage costs about $2,300 a month or a 45% increase in cost and about a 200% increase in the rate. This is not good for first time home buyers. This is making it more difficult for people who live on a fixed income to afford these higher priced houses. And unfortunately, we are starting to see housing begin to slow. Actually, that's not unfortunate. This is good. This is a good sign for the economy. You should not be able to list your house and sell it in a few hours and get hundreds of offers and have it go for over asking. That's not healthy. We want to see housing slow. Double digit growth in the housing market is not good long term for anybody. So what we're seeing is we're seeing across the board these starter homes are beginning to flatten out. We are seeing the overvalued homes, the homes between 1 million and 2 million continue to rise. And we're seeing the higher priced homes, the homes above four to five million, they're still growing at double digit interest rates because wealthy people still have money. They want to put it somewhere. The stock market doesn't look attractive, so they're still buying real estate. But this is going to slow home prices going forward as mortgage rates continue to creep up. 6% still over the last 50 years is a good interest rate, but compared to a year and a half ago, it sucks. The Fed meets again in July, and it looks like Powell's expecting to raise rates by another 50 basis points, maybe 75 basis points. It will all depend on what happens with inflation between now and July, what happens with the stock market between now and July, what happens with the overall economy as to whether Powell decides to still aggressively raise rates. He has decided that rates need to go up 
because inflation needs to stop. Their predictions are that next year inflation will be back between the two to three percent. You know what? I think they're going to be right. I don't see inflation going up another seven, eight percent. I think we sort of hit a top and it's going to level off here. And by 2023, we'll be back to normal with inflation. The economy should be back to normal. Things will look much better next year. If you like videos like this, make sure you watch some of my other videos. Subscribe to the channel to support me. Leave comments down below for ideas for future videos. And as always, I will see you guys next week.